Okay, last time we dealt a little bit with um, squares, square roots, cubes, and cube roots. Um, and just so we don't get any surprises, obviously we can do exactly the same with squares and square roots, etc., um, with decimals or fractions as we did with the whole numbers. So let's just have a little look at how that might work out. So nothing new here. If you see something like this, 5 over 6 cubed, well, it just means exactly what you think, right? It's 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6, right? And now the only thing you've got to add on to what you've been doing up until now is you've just got to remind yourself about how do you multiply fractions together. Well, remember with fractions, you just multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. So what you've got at the top of your fraction will be 5 times 5 times 5, and you should know pretty immediately that that's 125, right? Because 5 cubed is 125. And at the bottom, you've got 6 times 6 times 6, and again, this should be a cube you're familiar with. 6 cubed, 6 times 6 times 6 is 260. So it's as simple as that, doing, it, doing cubes or squares when you've got a um, fraction. Similarly, if you've got the square root, you've got to deal with something like the square root of 49 over 64. You're just going to take the square root of 49, which is 7, and you're going to take the square root of 64, which is 8, right? And remember, you can always just check you've got the right answer there by saying, will 7 over 8 times 7 over 8 give me that thing? Well... 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, so I know my answer here is correct. Okay, let's do some work with decimals now. 0, 0,3 squared, well, what does squared mean? It means you must take 0, 0,3 and you must multiply it by itself, right? And how do we get the answer to that? Well, let's make sure we remember how to do decimal multiplication. We cheat and we just say 3 times 3 and we get our answer of 9. Um, and then we need to correct for our cheats, right? So we cheated by multiplying by 10 and multiplying by 10. So we've got to correct twice. So we come back 1, 2 and we put our comma in there and we get 0, 0,09 as our answer. All right, what if I asked you now, what is the square root of 0, 0,09? Pause the video and write this answer in your homework book. Okay, did you write down immediately the answer as 0, 0,3, right? Because when we're asking what is the square root of 0, 0,09, we're saying what times by itself will give you 0, 0,09 as the answer. And we've seen that we were just shown that 0, 0,3 times itself gives you 0, 0,09 as the answer. So we actually had the answer already. But what would happen if I gave you one where we didn't? We hadn't just done something that would see, give us the answer to see quite easily. So say we had 0, 0,25, we wanted to find the square root of that. Now you might be able to immediately see what the answer is, but let's just see what would you do if you couldn't. Well, one way that might help is to rewrite 0, 0,25 as a fraction. And you get there that it's 25 over 100. Now, taking the square root of that fraction is easy. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 100 is 10. So our answer is 5 tenths. And if we wanted to write it as a decimal, the answer would just be 0, 0,5. All right, now that we're comfortable with fractions and um, decimals and everything, we can combine all sorts of calculations. Now, one of the things that we are going to have to use and do is we're going to need a good order of operations. Now, when you were younger, you used bod mass. Now that we are fully aware of exponents, we use bed mass. And bed mass just tells us we first, when we've got something to do, we first look at the brackets, then we look at the exponents, then we do division and multiplication. Those are at the same level, doesn't matter which order we do those two in, and addition and subtraction are the very last things that we do. Okay, here's an example for us to look at. Bed mass tells us, first look for brackets, well there aren't any, 
The next thing we look for are exponents. So we need to deal with these exponents first. So our next line will be 3 plus 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, minus 5 times 2 plus 7. The next thing that we do, according to bed mass, is any division or multiplication. Well, we've got multiplication over here, so that's what we need to do next. So we will have 3 plus 8 minus 5 times 2 gives me 10 plus 7. And then after that, according to bed mass, I must do addition and subtraction. Those are at the same level, addition and subtraction. So if I've only got addition and subtraction left in my calculation, I just work from left to right. So I say 3 plus 8, that gives me 11. 11 minus 10, that gives me 1. And 1 plus 7 gives me my final answer of 8. When you're dealing with square roots or cube roots, an important thing to do before you start doing any of the calculations is to put brackets around the whole thing that is inside the square root sign. That will help to remind you that you need to work out that thing first before you take the square root. It's a very important thing. You need to work out what the actual number is that's underneath that square root sign before you take the square root of it. So basically, any time you see a square root, you need to realize there are brackets around what's inside that square root sign. The other thing that's very important is when you're dealing with a fraction, you always just work out what's on the top and work out what's on the bottom separately before trying to combine the things. Okay. So, let's start. So, the very first thing we need to do is deal with that thing in brackets, even though those brackets we put in, it is the, those brackets are important. So, 16 plus 9 is 25, plus 3 squared over cube root of 64 plus 3. Okay, I've dealt with the brackets. Next, I need to deal with exponents, and exponents include square roots and cube roots and the things like that. Okay, so the square root of 25, that is 5, and 3 squared is 9. The cube root of 64 is 4, and we've got 3. Now we need to deal with the top and deal with the bottom of the fraction. So we get 5 plus 9 is 14, 4 plus 3 is 7, and 14 over 7 gives me 2.